Chris Petri here. Welcome everybody. Hey, thanks for coming by. Look at this. We have a beautiful painting. It's a sketchbook painting, everybody. I'm hoping you'll get your sketchbooks, your watercolor paper sketchbooks, have them uh, ready so that when you go out for a vacation or some travels or a weekend getaway, you take your sketchbook with you, you bring your small mini palette, you bring your brush, one or two brushes with you, and a pencil, you do your pencil drawing, you, got, you have a few brushes, you have your mini palette, and you have your sketchbook with you. Your watercolor sketchbook has to be watercolor paper. And that's it. You're ready to go. We did this beautiful sketchbook painting here of a boat, a beautiful red boat with another boat in the distance, a white boat in the distance here, some hills, some beautiful rocks. This is in Maine, so this is a beautiful coastal Maine scene. Um, and again, it's a sketchbook theme for this video, which is you're having your sketchbook with you, you bring it with you, and you just do really quick paintings nothing fancy. You're not trying to create a gallery painting or putting in a, a painting for competitions or anything. You're just getting the raw colors down there, a raw sketch in, and then you have it. You'll have a beautiful painting. So this one here, we added plenty of beautiful colors. We put in a focal point of the main red boat here, another boat in the uh, middle distance, and then we have some beautiful greenery along these hills and some trees and rocks on the distant shoreline. Beautiful painting to do. I know you're going to love this. You're going to start in just a second or two with this painting and we'll do the sketch first and then we'll be off and running with our painting. Okay, so we'll be right back. All right, we just saw our finished painting, our sketchbook painting, and um, we're going to take you through all the steps here, of course. We, we mentioned that just a second ago. Sketchbook painting is really fun. You can bring um, your palette of paints, like a smaller set of um, paints with you. All you need is a pencil, you know, a few brushes and a pencil, your sketchbook in a small palette. A, mi a mini palette is probably better when you're going out because you're not going to want to have too much uh, large equipment with you when you're going out painting. So you could fit all this in a small backpack or even like a small... Um, duffel bag or um, purse. You could even bring you know bring this in a, in a purse actually. This is like an 8 by 10 maybe or a 7 by a 10. 7 by 9. Let's take a look here. We have our our rulers here. Let's take a look at what this one is. This one, this sketchbook is a ten, roughly a 10 by 7. 7 by 10 sketchbook. Wire bound. So we're gonna, this is just some of the work I've done in my sketchbook, a beautiful boat harbor in Maine, another boat harbor scene with a, some, uh, there's a, this looks like a marina where there's like a boat service for um, having people um, store their boats there, service their boats, and then some other things too, some other odds and ends, some city scenes, some figures. Um, so I'm really, in, really enjoy um, sketchbooks. This was in uh, Pennsylvania on a trip with my parents on vacation. So let's get into it. This is my sketchbook here. I'm going to just take the pages and I'll get to a brand new page here. Like so. One more. Okay, like that. And what we'll do is, it's always good to uh, tape around your sketchbook. You might want to tape that down so like uh, you might have a board with you, like a smaller board, so you can tape it down. Or if you don't even need a board really, you just want to make sure your, your work is, your work surface is stable. So you'd want to maybe tape it down to something or so I'm going to take this, I'm going to put some tape around the borders of the sketchbook paper. That always looks good if you can get a, a good, clean, crisp border on your paper when you're watercolor painting. That's one way to do it. You can also just draw a pencil line of a rectangle in the area you want to work. That's also good too, that looks fine. But I'm taping mine down here. So. 
doing that. And I'll do one more cross here. Like that. So this way I'll have a nice crisp border rectangle with my tape. And it's taped down too so it doesn't move around too much. I don't want it sliding around when I'm working. Always remember you always um can you can you um see where I'm coming from? If you're if you're always making sure that your sketchbook or your paper, whatever whatever you're working on is really secure, you're going to be so much better off because if you're trying to draw and your your pa your pad of paper is sliding around or moving around or your watercolor paper, that's really going to be a negative for you because then if you're drawing in it, sometimes it slips and you're working with a brush stroke with paint, it'll just smudge it and you could ruin a whole painting by just, you know, um, having the paper move around on you or the sketchbook. So whatever you do, however you have to do it, be creative. You're the, you're the artist. Remember that? You can come up with creative ideas, how to keep your, your working surface secure, but you definitely want to have it secure when you're working, that's for sure. Also, too, wind. Sometimes wind will blow, so you want to make sure if there's a gusty wind comes up when you're outdoors, you got to make sure your paper is really taped down or you have it clipped or something to a board. Whatever it is, make sure your working surface is always very stable, and even if you're working indoors, too. That's a really big thing. I learned that many years ago, and ever since I've been doing that, my artwork goes so much better because I don't have to worry about my paper sliding when I'm drawing on it or moving around when I'm painting. So that's really a big thing. So try to try to keep that in mind. That's really important. Okay, so we have our paper taped down, our sketchbook taped down to the working board surface I have here. And then what I'm going to do next is start sketching. So I'll show you the finished painting one more time here on my uh, personal device. I have an iPhone. So this is the... That's the original painting that was in this sketchbook. I actually took took it out for some reason. I don't know why right now, but so that's the painting that I took a picture of. Actually, I took this picture from my TV screen, my laptop screen. But that's the painting right there. And that's a sketchbook painting on the spot. I was in a like a beautiful little um alcove in like a, a bay um it was like a basically like a marina area where there was all boat marinas and fishing boats and there was like uh, you know all kinds of uh, shacks and um, businesses like you know seafaring businesses and I just took uh, a boat that was sitting that was anchored and I just said let me let me paint that and draw that and paint that and there was another one in the distance over here so you can see over here there was another boat over here so that's what I did I just Again, it was a real, I didn't have a ton of time. I think I had like maybe an hour to work or an hour. Yeah, probably an hour to work, I think, on this. And it was in the same exact sketchbook that I did this painting, except I, I did take it out for some reason. I don't know why. But I'm going to put this across for me. I don't have enough real estate on here to keep that picture, but you can always do screen captures. And I'm going to zoom out. Maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. And let's start drawing this. So, um, I'm basically working with thirds. So, let's take the idea of, I'll get a magic marker. I know sometimes this doesn't look great on camera, like having magic marker marks on my papers and tape and all that. But, I guess it's the only way I can really show you what I'm doing in a detailed way so that you kind of see what I'm doing. So, the bottom of the boat is going to be about one-third here and then two-thirds is here that's about where the top of the boat might be and that's the top of the painting and the bottom of the painting on the horizontal lines going this way and then for the vertical lines maybe I'm gonna push the boat back a little bit in this scene it seems to be when I painted it the first time on location the boat was a little bit forward this way but I think it would look better if it was kind of back more so that it kind of doesn't look like it's ramming into this side of the picture. So that's a design idea. Something to think about when you're looking at your paintings. You can always improve things and that's why I'm thinking it would have looked better if I painted it a little bit more to the left when I originally did this. So 
um, I'm going to take this and maybe say, let me go a little more to the left over here. So I'm going to make the bow about like here and here, going straight down like this. So that's about the only two, these two up here, and then these three, which is the thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. Okay, we're going to have fun with this. We're just doing some really lovely boats here in this harbor. Beautiful harbor scene. Some fishing boats. So let me first just get a little bit of a line going across here. I might even go a little bit lower than the third, but about there. And then I'm going to take my, my pencil and hold it up to the picture. I'm going to hold it up to the picture on the phone and say, what's that angle? And I take my pencil and I kind of turn it and say, oh, it's about right there. And I hold it up to the picture and go, okay, that's where the angle is. Then I take that angle like that and I say, okay, I'm going to bring it down to the picture like this. And then I kind of do that. And like that. And I'm in, in alignment with my mark that I made up here. So I was saying that I was going to keep my boat about here in the picture, in the painting. A little bit this way. I kind of had it this too far forward in the first painting. So I'm going to make it a little better this time. And then I'm just going to take the pencil and I'm going to just draw the pencil line this way. Hopefully you can see the pencil line as I go down. Like that. And it's a soft angle there, like that. So the angle there is not too steep. It's kind of like very slight up this way. Okay, and this one is here. And then when I come down here, I do a little bit of shadowing or uh, reflections of the boat. Not too much concerned about that. We're going to paint that in more or less. We're going to do the de you know do the details when we paint. And then the front of the boat comes down this way, and then about here we have the front of the boat, the cabin area. And we have that come across here. And that comes down like so. And it goes down this way, and this is the, we sort of see the back of the cabin, like that where the doors and windows are on the back of the cabin. And there's a door there for the back of the cabin, like that. So we just get in the basics of it. And then over here, there's more of a front area of the cabin and then a, a roof on this. And then we just have that too as well. And then over here, there's the exhaust for the engine. And I think over here the windows should be angled slightly like that. And there's another top to the roof like that. And there's a small GPS up on top. And then we have some windows. We have about four windows. That. So you can kind of see I'm working my drawing here, contour drawing. And then we still see a little bit of the, the inside of the boat here. We're looking down a little bit on this picture. I remember I was a little, I was a little bit up higher than the, this uh, alcove, this, this bay area. So I was looking down on the boat just a tiny bit. So we were I was at a higher elevation. Sit, I remember clearly sitting in a park bench. There was a park bench there. And I was sort of looking down into the lagoon area. And this was the boat sitting down in the, the lagoon or the um, alcove area, the, the bay area. So that's an interesting angle. You can kind of see inside the boat just a little bit. And there's a couple things inside the boat. Not really too much detail. We don't want to have too much detail. This is a sketchbook painting. 
remember, when you're doing your sketchbook paintings, you're just having fun getting down some colors, the basics of things. You're not going to, to um, uh, you know, too con you know, you're not getting too con you know, you're not concentrating too much on all the minute details. You're just getting the, the rough look of everything. Because then you'll bring it back to the studio and you'll paint it again. And then you'll use all the colors that you used in your composition when you did this in your sketchbook out on location. And you might take a couple pictures too. That would be another good thing to do. Take some pictures of it so you have pictures of the location. You have your sketchbook notes here where you do your painting. You put your colors in, you know, your shadows and so forth. So I'm going to go across here. So the, the distant shoreline over here is higher than the boat. So I'm going to go across here with that, like so. And now's a good time for a break. Let's take a break, you know. Once you start drawing, you're going to get really focused on that. You're going to be working hard to get your drawing good. But then you're going to come to a point where you might be working 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you're going to start to fatigue a little bit because you've been concentrating so much on getting things accurate and checking lines and looking at things. That's a perfect time. Take a five minute break, stretch your legs, walk around, take a sip of water. If you have some bottled water with you, take a sip of water. And then you get back again and you sit down and start working again. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get up. I'm going to actually, I'm standing, so I'm going to actually sit down for a few minutes. Take a, um, I'm going to have some coffee. I got some coffee here with me. Um, we have our paints all ready to go. So we're going to start painting just in a few minutes or so. But let's take a break to, so that we can finish up our drawing. And this way, when we come back to finish up our drawing, we're fresh again. And then we can look and say, okay, what do we want to finish up on our drawing portion? So I hope we'll be able to remember that. Let's take some breaks in between if you need them. I need them. You may not. Everyone's different, okay? So I'm not saying I'm the, for, you know, the foremost authority on how many breaks you should take. You take what you need. You may not need a break. You might be able to work straight through and your concentration is fine. You know, I'm a little different. And, you know, I think more people are like me. Sometimes your, you know, concentration goes a little bit after, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Maybe I have a touch of ADD. I don't know. But whatever the case is, please take a break if you need it. If you don't need it, just keep working on through because, you know, that's, you know, you're the artist. You only know yourself how many breaks you might need. Or if you have strong concentration levels, you can keep working. That's fine. Beautiful. Do it that way. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, and I just noticed as I was coming back, I think the cabin on this boat is too much, too wide. So I'm going to take my kneaded eraser, and I'm going to make an adjustment on this. And uh, I think it'll look better like this. I think it was too, too wide. I kind of looked at that. I, I drew it a little bit too wide. And maybe we can, this should be a little more tapered like that, usually. Yeah, that's better. So you can adjust things when you come back after you take a break. You can look at something and say, ah, oh, you know what? It does look a little bit like I need to make it a little smaller. Or, you know, you might have to make it larger, you might have made it too, too, too slim, or you have to make it wider. Or here I had to shrink it down a little bit, so I just, not a problem. When I'm drawing, I can take my kneaded eraser and draw, you know, or erase uh, some lines and just shorten up this uh, front of this cabin here on this boat, this fishing boat. And I did that and it's not a problem at all. I needed an eraser and you're all set. And then uh, we'll continue on. So. Here I'm looking at this distant boat across the um, uh, bay here, and I notice that the back of the boat is about right where this line is here. So if you can imagine this line here, if we if we go up here to this, that's about where the back of this boat is up here. So I'm going to see if we can get that over here, and uh, I'm going to do that. So there's the back of that boat and this boat goes up like this and it's it's a good sized boat and it's over like this here and it goes pretty a pretty good deal this way 
And then on the back of this boat, we can see the cabins about here, like that. And it's about there. And it goes down like this, like that. And that looks pretty good. See, now we got this one good the first time, I think. That looks good. And we're just going to do a little bit of lines here just to remember to put in those reflections. And then across here we have the rock, rocky shores here. So we're going to put some rocks. So I'm going to put some indications of rocks. So I'm going to draw some rocks. They're kind of sharp looking. Some round shapes, some square lines. And they go all the way across here. And then there's a little bit of a resting area where there's just maybe just some sand. And then there's some more rocks over here. So I'm just very loosely indicating where I'm going to paint the rocks and things over here on the shoreline, distant shoreline over here. And then there's some grass over here. There's a grass hill and some bushes and trees and things. So I'm going to get that in there just to sort of... And again, this is a sketchbook um, painting. So we're not doing this as if we're going to put it into a frame and bring it to a gallery or put it into a competition or anything like that. We're just going to draw and paint it, having complete fun, enjoyment. We're out here enjoying the day. There's It's the sunny day. It's beautiful breezes. It's summertime maybe, perhaps. I think it was warm out. Yeah, it was summertime when I was here in Maine. And, um, you know, the weather was beautiful. And, uh, you know, you're enjoying the day. You might have a just a relaxing day out painting and drawing out in the plain air. So I just did some of the bushes over here that we can see. And that's it. And then I just left some white paper here and there. And then here in the foreground we're going to have some of the colors of paint. So I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to do that with the brush. We'll, be get, we'll get creative with our brush and our colors. But that's it. So now we are all set. We're going to paint in just a second or two. I'm just going to look at this one more time and kind of make sure I got everything good. Okay, the shadows are over here. So I'm thinking the sun is directly up overhead. If you want to give yourself an advantage, um, once you're maybe finished doing your contour drawing, you can just take your pen or Sharpie marker, whatever it is, and you might make your light insignia and say, light is pretty much directly overhead on this painting. So there's not going to be any long shadows anywhere. It's midday, maybe around noontime, lunchtime or so. So the light's directly over top of us, coming down. Might be a little bit behind us a touch, shining on the boat this way. So I think we're in good shape now. So let's take another quick break. I'm going to um, get some water from my water container and I'll be back in just a second. Hey everybody, just a quick informational. I'm really excited. I've been invited to the Thousand Island Arts Center to teach a uh, workshop this summer. It's uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a daytime workshop, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. I'm going to put up the itinerary in just a second, too, as well. But I wanted you to have the Thousand Island Arts Center phone number so you can call to register. Or you can also register online. That's up to you. Uh, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Again, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Or you can also um, register and look up all the information online at T-I-A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Again, their website is T-I-A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Um, I th I'll put the itinerary up here so you can just, I'll scroll it. I'm not going to read it. 
I'll just kind of scroll it up so you can kind of see the class description. And you can look this up online too. I encourage everybody to look um, for the um, brochure. If you go to the website, you'll see a brochure button. You click on that brochure button, you'll see my course, as well as other courses if you can't happen to make these dates, but you still want to take a watercolor class or watercolor course and workshop. And um, there's also an online course for watercolor artists. So if you're interested in doing online uh, watercolor courses, they have those as well. That's something you was really, this is a great resource, everyone, for your, for your watercolor art. I know some of you mentioned that you wanted to um, do, wanted to inquire about online art and watercolor painting classes. I, um, I'm not doing them right now. I'm really looking forward to maybe in the future doing some online courses. But right now, I'm just not, um, not geared up for that right now. So they have them though for those that want to do online courses. But just a great resource and beautiful historic area, beautiful scenery, water and boats everywhere, beautiful architecture, shopping, there's uh, museums. So that's the itinerary. And um, I hope you'll all make it out to the workshop. And again, we're going to have a great time, tons of fun drawing and painting and watercolor. So I hope to see you there. And um, let's get back to our watercolor painting. All right, let's start painting. So we're here, we're on location. We're going to kind of keep in our minds, like pretending we're on location now. We're sitting in a harbor. We're looking at this boat. It's anchored. We drew our sketch first, our drawing. Now we're just going to go in and start having a great time putting in our colors. So the boat is red, so I'm going to get some different reds out on the palette here. Cadmium red here, and then I did some alizarin crimson here, and we're just going to go right in. And we're going to paint this a la prima all at one time. We're not going to really do any glazing techniques or anything. And I'm just carefully placing the paint onto the paper with a number six uh, Raphael Kalinsky Sable brush. And uh, I'm going to get a little darker with this. So I'm going to go with a little more red straight in there with alizarin crimson. Maybe I'm going to go with a touch of ultramarine blue just to make it a little darker, possibly. Just to get a little variation. And then as it goes this way, we're going to get it a little lighter, like so. And then some cadmium red. And you can see I'm just placing the paint nice and easy on here. And then as it gets closer to the right, it's be going to become and let's not forget to put some warm and cool everywhere. Let's put a little cerulean blue in here. Like that. And then it gets a little lighter over here. That's maybe where the light's catching the side of the boat. Like so. And we could get a little French ultramarine blue, maybe some French, uh, some ultramarine violet purple. And let's get a little bit of the, start getting in some of that reflection and shadow in there at the bottom of the boat, like so. Just put a little bit in there, get it started. And then over here too, very light over here. You can see I'm going very, very light. Barely any paint, mostly just water. And uh, you can actually add a touch of color there just to make that little bit of a that looks good. And again, 
we're doing a sketchbook painting, so we're not fussing too much. We're trying to get what we're seeing on the paper. And then here there's some cerulean blue. A little bit of a shadow over here we see on the boat. We'll try to keep the side of the boat kind of light. And then let's uh, go with a little bit of raw umber maybe. Let's do the windows. And again, you're doing a sketchbook painting, so you want to, you know, you're trying to work a little bit expeditiously. You don't want to take too much time. So you want to kind of move at a good pace. You don't want to be stalling too much with things because a, a storm could crop up anywhere, anytime. Okay, so we have some of the little bit of uh, cobalt blue under here. A little bit of shadow there. And there's a bit of red on top of the boat. So you can see I'm kind of just working my colors here. And I'm going with what I see. A little bit of raw umber maybe. Just here and there. And now I think once you can see that I have my boat painted like so, like we're pretty, we're looking good here. We actually have, the boat's in, so that's a very positive thing. We have that painted, so that's the main focal point of the painting. So once you have that in, you're really feeling good. Maybe our windows need to be a little bit larger. And what else do we have here? Okay, so we... I think I'm going to do a little bit across the way with the other boat. Cerulean blue. A little bit of the um, ultramarine violet. I just want to get a little bit of color on that one. And it's in the distance, so it's going to be a soft cerulean blue with a little bit of ultramarine violet on the side of the boat and then I'll go with a little bit of uh, a tiny bit of um, and if it, just a thing to remember if you want to add some paint to like a smaller object where you only need a tiny bit of paint you dry off your brush a little bit on the tissue and this way you only have a little, and then you dry it off and then you only have a little bit of paint left on there and then you can kind of and you can kind of see already, it's. I shouldn't do that. I should let that dry. So let's let that dry over here. So that's no big deal. We'll let that dry. I was trying to do the red stripe on the bottom of the boat. There's a red stripe on the bottom of the boat there. I'm going to let that go for now. Maybe we'll do that French ultramarine stripe on the top. Like that. That looks better. You have to lift up a little bit and let that dry. Let it dry. I'm going to go with raw umber and French ultramarine blue. And then get the windows in. We'll do the windows on this over here. And there's three windows. One, two, and three. Like that. And then there's a little bit of a bluish color for the back window. Like that. And then over here on the back of the boat, there's a little bit of, I'll use some uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, 
French ultramarine blue, get a little bit of a darker dark, dry off my brush on the tissue a little bit, and we'll just put a little bit of darker dark over here, like that. That's a little darker over there on that side of the boat. And then no reason why we can't put a little bit of cobalt blue and cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, and start getting a little bit of the blue underneath here like that. Maybe a little bit of green. We'll use some uh, Viridian green. And that's the fun thing about doing sketchbook paintings. You're just having fun, having a great day out there when you're outdoors and you're painting. I think most of us will admit that it's hard to really get out there and paint outdoors. Some of you have been outdoors painting, I know, a lot. Some of you may have not been painting all that much outdoors. But outdoor painting is its more challenging, it's more difficult. Uh, you'll, you have to actually go out and experiencing, experience it <laughs> to actually learn from it. Because you're gonna you're gonna come back the next time when you go out and you'll have other things with you because you realize if the wind picks up you need to have like a bag to kind of tie to your easel if you have an easel you know you're gonna need to throw some rocks in a bag and tie it to your easel so your easel doesn't fly over and fall over I've had that happen when I first started <laughs> painting years ago when I went outdoors to paint so you're gonna have all these little checklists of things you got to bring <laughs> after a while so just trust me. Outdoor painting is much more challenging. Don't get frustrated by it. There's another thing too. Always plan for the weather if you can. If you are going to go out and do outdoor painting, one of the biggest things is check the weather and, and kind of make sure it's not going to be raining heavy um, or raining. If it's a good day, it's not windy, almost no wind and no rain. So if you if you have no wind and no rain, you're, you're way ahead of the game if you're going out and painting outdoors. That's for sure. So... We're going to continue on here, and uh, get some more paint over here. So you can see, I'm just approaching this like having fun. It's a great thing to just have a great time with sketchbook painting because it's not, again, it's not a finished gallery painting or you're not painting this for someone for a, um, you know, for like a, uh, a gift or it's not for um, a commission painting or anything like that. You're just having, you're out there having a great time. So that's all we're going to do. So we're going to continue painting on here. I'm going to take a break soon. Um, let's get a few more. Let's get some French ultramarine blue. Let's start to get that. And I'm going to try to just replicate what I see in my original painting. Okay, I'm just getting that paint on there like that. Quick brush strokes, a little bit of red in here for the boat. Like that. Okay, get some good thick paint on there, like that, get some of those other colors in there, burnt siennas, then a lot of, uh, I see some really beautiful Viridian green. Then over here, maybe some raw umber. So then you gray it down a little bit here and there. Okay, there we go. And then maybe you take a tissue and you blot up a little bit where this white is here, where the cabin is. 
Maybe do a little bit of the, like that. Maybe another little bit of like that. Splash a little bit of water on there. That always works. Splash a little bit of water on your uh, painting too. You can always blot it up a little bit. It makes great watercolor effects if you just splash on a little bit of water. As you can see. Okay, let's take a break. We're going to come right back in just a second and we will um, continue on finishing the water. We will also work on some of the hillsides up above. And so for that reason, you're going to see me add some of that green right now, sap green, in my water area here, like that. So that's why I did that, because I know if I don't do that, the whole painting is going to look sort of lopsided, I guess, really. So if you add some sap green down here and over here, then when you add it up here on top, up this way, on the hillside, you're going to add some sap green up here, right? Like we saw in the original photo. If you're adding sap green up here, but you don't have it down here and down here, it's going to look really, the painting won't look harmonized. And that's, you want to have unity and harmony in your paintings for sure. If you can do it with other things like shapes and things like that, that's great too. That's all about thinking you, uh, ahead of time with design and stuff like that. We'll talk about that in other vi videos. And we, I've talked about that in the past, but we, we will cover it again in the future. I'm always re um, visiting all the design principles that we cover all the time here on my channel. But... Um, Color harmony is really critical. You have to have color harmony in your paintings, I believe, for it to look good and look um, uh, pleasant looking, the painting overall. So let's come right back and we'll start to finish up our painting. Uh, otherwise, this is really like 90, you know, 80 percent complete now. We just have to add some more um, grassy hills here with some bushes and trees and some rocks here along the shoreline. A couple more details on this boat here, and maybe a detail or two on this boat, and we're all set, okay? So we're going to be back in just a second, and I just I thought about it just now. If, if you like this channel, please subscribe right down on the right-hand side of the screen. Underneath the screen, you'll see a red subscribe button. You click that button, and this way you'll get my videos coming up in the next uh, weeks and months ahead. And um, you can always unsubscribe too, so and, and it's not like you're on any lists, uh, so I'm not going to be sending out any information or emails or anything like that. The only thing the subscribe button does is it just puts um, my website, uh, it links my YouTube site, I should say, to your YouTube site so that you get my videos and you become alerted every time I make a new video. So this way you'll get my new videos each week as they come out, and that's all it is really. So there's no other things attached to a subscribe um, uh, membership. Subscribing just really means you're just putting me in your um, queue so that my new videos come into your YouTube channel and you get alerted that I've made a new video. That's all it is and that's it. Plain and simple. There's no strings attached and you can always unsubscribe by just clicking the button again and it'll give you the option to unsubscribe if you want to but I always say you know please feel free to subscribe this way you know you don't miss out on any new videos coming out that I'm doing in the future and it's really exciting because Every week I'm doing new videos on all kinds of subject matter. Boats this week, flowers next week, the week after, cityscapes, city scenes. Maybe we're going to do a countryside scene the week after that. Maybe some figures the next week. So we're constantly changing our subject matter. But remember, I'm always teaching you the fundamentals of watercolor over and over and over again. And that means it's going to stick. You're going to get better at your watercolors. And that's the most important thing here on my channel is I want you to get better at your watercolors because this way you'll be happy, you'll be excited, you'll continue to paint and have a great time with it. And it's going to be a really happy thing for your life doing watercolors because we all know we got stresses in life. All the other things that go on in life, there's always stresses. But let watercolor be your fun thing to do so that you can take time out and just have a good time, a fun time and enjoy a few minutes of just relaxation 
drawing and painting and watercolor. So I'll be right back. And again, um, thank you for watching. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome everybody that you, if you're just coming by for the first time, I'm really uh, happy that you're here and um, we're going to continue on and do lots of paintings in the future. And you're going to have a great time with us. So just come along with us, grab some brushes and some paint and some paper and you're all set. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, we are back again in business. We're doing a uh, chock full of nuts, interesting information here on this video with boat paintings. And um, we have two boats in this painting. So if you like boats, you're really excited about this painting. So I'm hoping you're going to continue on with us here and finish this one up. And again, the really the main things we have left are just the rocks across on the shore and then some trees and some grass in the hills up here, and we're going to leave some white paper. And again, the idea of this one is the concept is your sketchbook painting. So you're kind of getting down some colors. You're getting down your fundamental sketch. Your, you know, your sketch, you can just sketch one thing even. You could just sketch just one boat and not worry about that distant boat across the way. And then you do a little bit of water. After you do your boat, you get your boat in first, paint that. Then you just get some watercolors in for the water, and then, you know, you can do some distant hills and some rocks and things and you'll be all set like the original uh, painting. We'll look at that one more time just so you can kind of see the uh, reference that we have here. So this is the original. So I'll zoom in just one more time here so you can kind of see the original. So that's the original painting. You can see, you know, that we just Beautiful red boat here in the foreground. Lots of beautiful colors. You can see the pure colors here with the straight out of the two paint all the way through here in the in the foreground. Then as we get into the middle distance, you can see I used more uh, subtle colors like cerulean blue, a little bit of the lighter washes, a little bit more water, less paint. And then in the distant colors here, we did the rocks in the distant boat, and then some a little bit of grass up here with some greens, you know. I used all my greens up here and a little bit of uh, cadmium lemon yellow. So we'll, we'll mix those up next and we'll kind of show you how we're finishing this up. I'll set this across from me. I have a little stand across from me. So you, this is my phone stand like this. I'll zoom back out again. Like that. That's my phone stand. And I just sit my phone stand like that across from me and I paint right from this. So if you can do screen captures or even pause my video, if you can pause my video and have it up on your, uh, you know, my finished painting on your camera, like this on your phone, across from you, you can paint right from that. Or if you have an iPad, it's even better better because it's a, a larger. Or if you have a laptop, that's even better yet. A larger screen yet. Okay, so now we're going to continue on here. I think we have... Some more blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. So I just take those blues and I kind of just let them mix in and mingle here. And I think that looks fine. And then maybe I have a little bit of that uh, cadmium red, like that, on the bottom of that boat. That looks good. And again, if you see, if you go over a little bit of a, like if you go too far with some paint and you think you've overpainted something, you just take a little bit of tissue, you fold it up like this into a small bit of tissue like that, and you just lift it up, press it down, lift it up to uh, fix a spot or two here and there. And then we're going to go in with some French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. We'll do some rocks. Those are good rock colors, burnt umber, burnt sienna too. So uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber. That makes some good rock colors. And then we're just going to do some rock colors over here. Maybe you do some black rocks here and there. Like that. And I'm using a pretty large brush here. I'm going to try to do the whole painting with one brush. I, I like to do that. Try to do a painting with just one brush. The same brush the whole way through. Like that. And you're just doing some... You 
doing some uh, rocks. And you can do some splashing too. So I'll take some of my some splashing there. I might need a little bit of more uh, a little more water. Burn sienna, French ultramarine blue, burn umber, and then a little more splashing there for some rocks along the shoreline here. And some burnt umber, I think looks good, brown and burnt sienna. To get some warmth in on those rocks, I think I made those rocks a little bit too, uh, maybe too much, may I don't know. It looks a little better with a little bit of warm color too. So that's why I'm adding those browns and reddish colors. That looks good. And let's get some trees in and I think we're going to be set here. Let's use some cadmium lemon yellow. And you can see that really livens up that wash like that with a little bit of cadmium lemon. And then you can even take a little bit of that and put it in here. Just a little bit of it. And then uh, some sap green. Like that. Some sap green back here. Like that. So I'm just doing some distant hills and leaving white paper here and there. I don't want to paint everything in. Maybe I'll do a little bit of brown too. And just again some indications of things. Not We're not going for a museum painting here. Sap green, burnt sienna, tree over here like that. There's a couple happy bushes over here and over here too. You could add a little bit of blue in there make a little bit of a shadow color maybe like that. And maybe a little bit of blue. Um, this is uh, cerulean blue couple splashes, maybe a little bit of sky color. And again, you can do that. And that's pretty much a, a finished painting, a sketchbook painting. Um, maybe we'll do a little darker darks over here. Maybe there's a little bit of a darker dark there. Okay, here too. I wanted to do a darker, um, maybe like a uh, cobalt blue shadow under here. Like that. I go over a little bit of too much paint there, I lift up like that. Okay, so that's a little bit of shadowing there. Maybe if I say to myself, I went too much overboard with the shadow, I take my tissue and I roll it up and get it into a fine line like this. And then if I want to lift up a part of the shadow, I can just go right down like that and then press on it like that. Then I can go back in and this way I don't have the whole thing in shadow and I can add some dark stuff. So you can fix up your shadows and like like that, you know, if you have to. If you find that your shadows didn't go great in a certain section, that's not a problem. I'll use a little bit of cerulean blue over here too. I think I wanted to I wanted to get that front of the boat like that a little better. And then by putting that little bit of dark here, 
And then I even add a little bit of more dark there, dark paint, just a little touch more of dark paint. That accentuates the bow of the boat. That line, that beautiful white bit of interior of that bow of the boat, that's good. Same thing over here, we're going to do that over here. Let's do that over here. Maybe some French ultramarine blue there. And this is really the uh, fun of sketchbook painting. You're just having a great time. There's no worries about having to make a perfect painting at all. And then now we even can see how great it's going to look when we lift up our tape. The border is going to look really good. Like that. And that pretty much gives us a gorgeous sketchbook painting that we have for memories if we're out painting uh, on vacation or just out having a great time. Again, a lot of times we're painting indoors because it's more, you know, um, expeditious. We can get our paintings done and get our practice time in and all of that and we don't have to go out with our backpacks and all that kind of thing. So. I always say that when you do your outdoor paintings and your sketchbook paintings, those are going to be your really fun paintings where you have a great time and you remember those the most and have a great time with it. And uh, you can kind of see we did that here. And then maybe I'm just going to do a few spots here just to... A little bit of a rock there maybe. And you can see I sort of made a rock going around the front of the boat so that the front of the boat you could see really, really well. So I sort of uh, painted around the front of the boat, negative shape painting as they call it. And then we have the we have that that part of the boat really described well so that it really looks good. We can even add some white paint to that once it dries, but those are a few things you can do. So maybe if you wanted to do a few touch-ups here and there, very simple. Um, you could do a touch of, um, you could take some titanium white like this in your tube paint, just touch a, the tip of your brush just the tiniest bit, and you might make a point on the front of your boat there, because the front of my boat looks like I kind of lost the very, very point of the bow of the boat. So that's something where you can you could touch that up a little bit with some white titanium white paint again. I added a little bit of darker sap green here. So you could add some sap green like this for some tree shapes in the hills here. Okay, we had a great time. Good luck with this painting, everybody. Have fun. And if you can even do this with your sketchbook, one of your sketchbooks that you have, it's got to be watercolor paper, though. So remember, use water. You have to use a watercolor uh, mixed, uh, I would say mixed media, um, watercolor paper, watercolor sketchbook, or a um, mixed media sketchbook. This wouldn't come out really good if you're trying to do it on like a regular... Um, just regular draw drawing paper. And I just remembered I wanted to add that exhaust pipe there. Maybe a few more darks under here. 
like so under for the windows like that And then once this dries over here too, these darker darks, you could take a little touch of white and make the um, the frames of the windows in here a little more uh, pronounced so that you can see those a little more clearly. And I think I'm going to do that. So what I'll do is when you see the when you see the um, thumbnail picture on the video, you'll notice that I, I will have touched it up by then. So what I'm going to do is let this dry 100%. And maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll let this dry now and we'll come back for just another two minutes where I can add in those few little bit of white details with white paint, titanium white paint, so you can see how I touch it up a little bit here. So you can kind of see my final, final bit of touch-ups with my white paint. Okay, so I'll be right back and um, we'll do that final touch-ups of white paint on the bow of this boat here and on some of these windows here. All right, where y'all we're back just for the last few minutes here just to touch up a couple things on the painting. First thing I'll do is I'll just maybe I'll just wipe up my palette a little bit. I, I tend to always try to keep my palette clean. You can kind of see that this painting was pretty much um, a lot of fresh clean colors and it's a smaller painting obviously so we didn't have to really um, uh, clean up the palette every uh, few minutes or so. So the thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a needlepoint brush like this, a rigger brush, and I'm going to take a little bit of, um, this is yellow ochre. You take a little tiny bit of yellow ochre like this, just a little bit of yellow ochre and you put it onto the top of the paint, your titanium white paint. like that, yellow ochre. And you just mix it in a little bit with the top of the tube of the paint. You kind of want to have a little bit of a warmer white. You don't want to have like a white that's just stark um, white, pure white. You'd like to have that little bit of warmer white, sunlight. You know, like the feeling of yellow ochre seems to really, um, yellow ochre seems to really, I don't know, it, it, it kind of, sunlight does look like yellow ochre. If you see sunlight in the morning time, like in the dawn, in the early morning, and you see sunlight, it, it is yellow ochre really, the color of it, when it's kind of like hitting the trees and the and the roads and everything. So yellow ochre, if you put a little yellow ochre in your white, in your painting, you're going to automatically resonate with people when they see that. They're going to go, that looks, yeah, that looks very true to life. So that's why we add yellow ochre to our so I'm adding those windows, the uh, window frames, like that. But I'm leaving them darker up top here. This is the shadow over here, so I'm not going to put those window frames all the way up. The light's just catching them a little bit on the bottom part of the frames, but up here on the top of the window, it's kind of darker. You could get a little bit more, um, you know, detailed and say okay I'm going to put a little bit of it but I'm not I'm going to add a little blue to the white and you can do that too you can add a little blue to the white that probably works good and then again more yellow ochre and white like that and we're just going to add the we said that over here we added that blue and brown for the rocks and we sort of lost the the bow of the boat, the shape of that pointy bow. There we go. See, we got that back. That looks much better now. Like that. There we go. And that's it. This is complete. This is our sketchbook painting of a gorgeous boat scene in a harbor, fishing harbor in Maine. We had a wonderful time. I'm glad you joined us here. Hope you'll try this. Hope you'll try this a few different times. 
Um, you, if you want to get a little more detail here, you could even go with a white stripe on the boat here, like this, and then you would skip a couple spots. And if, if your hand veers off, you just erase it with your finger, doing some finger painting, and you can do that. So you could add some white to that, you could add some blue, French ultramarine blue, maybe there's another blue stripe underneath. So you could add some details, but I wouldn't go too much. This is kind of like, I'm flirting with disaster right now, trying to add some extra details here. That's usually what kind of ruins things when you add too many details, but that looks all right. And then you can maybe, I'm trying to think there was the, a little bit of burnt umber and burnt, and uh, French ultramarine blue burnt umber. Uh, maybe we'll do some white. Let's do some more white. And you can do some white lettering, just a little bit of dabs. Like that. Okay, one more detail. Let's try a life preserver over here. Why not? They're usually red, white stripe, red stripe. Like that. Then you take a little blue, grayish color, like that. And then maybe you just add a little shadow under there, like that. And if it doesn't come out great, the life preserver, you can always lift it up with a tissue. Take a tissue and just blot it up like that. And then start again. And maybe just do another little bit of, like that. And then maybe another detail over here. Maybe a, maybe a, maybe there's a grab bar over here. Like that. Maybe a little bit of details over here. Anything else we can do um, without going too much? You know, we don't want to go overboard with details. Again, details will really ruin a painting, that's for sure. Better off that I stop now. Ah, oh, I know what I can do. White paint. White paint here. Maybe a little bit of blue. French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Let's do a little bit of smoke. So we just add a little bit of that smoky color, like that. And that kind of looks good. And it's kind of mysterious. You can kind of see it, but it's not glaringly obvious that it's smoke but it, it does look good, and it kind of, there we go. All right, everybody, that's about the last detail before we start to go overboard with too many details, and then we're going to be uh, not too happy. Okay, let's uh, wrap this one up for now. Again, thanks so much for watching the video. Appreciate that you're sticking here to the end to kind of see these last-minute details. These can make a big difference in your painting to make your paintings look more beautiful and finished looking. But again, we always try to, as artists, if this makes sense to you, if you want to ask yourself that question, is um, how much consideration do you give when you're at the end of your painting, when you're kind of finishing up, of how many details you're putting in? Because really, keeping the details a little bit less is much better. You can always go in and like a week later and add a few little things a week later after you've looked at the painting for about a week and you say, oh, you know what, it's perfect. I don't need to add anything. But if you add too many details in, 
it's hard to remove them, as you can imagine. If you put in a bunch of extra details to try to scrub them out and clean them off the paper, that's not good. Usually that looks really, doesn't look good. It kind of makes the painting look unpleasant looking because you can see the spots where you corrected and tried to erase things off the paper by scrubbing with your brush or dabbing with paper towels and things like that. So the best thing to do is less details, and then if you have to add in a few more, the next week after you kind of look at the painting and you have it on your wall for a little while, you tape it up to your wall or pin it up on the wall or tape it on the fridge. You look at it a few times, you can say, oh, you know what? Yeah, I think I could add two things to this and, you, and that's it. And then, you know what I mean? Try to think of it that way is stop your painting a little bit early and not go overboard with details. You'd be much happier with your paintings. I believe you will. Okay. So again, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.